Okay, so now we're gonna do some movement and explain how that works. So I'm gonna activate Brank first. So I use one of my action tokens, put it in there, Brank's card, to show that I've activated Brank. So remember, you can use two of these on a character. Um, so you're not gonna be able to activate everyone twice. So that's another tactical element. You've got to kind of manage who you want to kind of activate. And what will happen is I activate a character, and then you activate a character, and I activate a character again, and so on, until we've used all our action tokens, and then that's the end of the rush, and okay. we carry on. So when it comes to moving, um, it's worth, first of all, pointing out the threat hexes. So here, you can see that I've painted the front two hexes of my base red. So here again on Caradon as well. And that's because they are the threat hexes. So you've got to kind of watch out for those when you're moving around. So the ones that are painted red affect these areas here. So one, two, three, four, five. And that'll be important when we come to slamming and when we come to ranged attacks as well. So can you actually, um, I know you're going to get to the movement in a, in, a, in a moment, but can you actually spin on the spot without move, move, using any of your uh, your movement numbers? Yes, yeah, you can. So, for example, Brank has got a movement of four, and that means they can move four hexes, or make four move steps, I guess. But if I wanted to just turn around on the spot, like that, that doesn't count. So you're pivoting from... You're pivoting, the yeah. Uh, Are there any other ways to pivot? Yeah, so what you could actually do is you could actually pivot... On, like you imagine on one of your things and you pivot like that and that would count as one. So that's just that's just like shifting your weight slightly to get into a different... So as long hexes. as you're not moving your your hexes into a, a different area of the map, if you're staying within those three, that counts as no movement. Yeah. You can just spin around as much as you like. You can do that's right. full 180 if you wanted to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But as soon as you start to move into new hexes, that's when it counts okay. as a move. So when you want to move, you can kind of go one, two, three, four. So that's a very simple move. But you can be a bit more complicated as well. So you can go one. You can turn at any point as well. So you might go one and then turn here to go two, three, and then you might turn again. I don't know why you do this to go four. <laughs> well, actually you might want to do that if you want to get into the rear of someone. I think you got lost. Yeah. So bear in mind, you can turn at any point during your movement and you can turn at the end. So I might go one, two, three, four, and then I might decide, okay, well, I don't want to show too much of my rear, maybe to the spawn. So I might turn at the end to there. So if you have played Dreadball, because obviously Dreadball has got giants in as well, this is very different to that. It's, we've made it a lot easier to move around the arena rather than kind of getting bogged down. So, yeah. And I guess with the pivoting, as soon as you've done it once, it'll then become second nature on what you can. Yeah, can't yeah, do. and I think that you know that yeah, once you've kind of once you've moved around a few times, it's it's dead straightforward. So you might also want to extend your run. So say occasionally, you know, I've moved four there, but I might think, oh, actually, you know, I really want to. Well, I can't quite get to Scarathon here. Well, I might be able to actually. So you might want to extend. So, for example, if I was there. Yes, okay, so I've moved this way and I really want to kind of come in and slam Caradon. So then you can do something called a, a dash. Now, that is a test, it's like uh, that's a speed test in this case. And the way that the test and the dice rolls work, it's actually fairly standard actually across the board and that's very easy actually. So you nearly always start with three dice. And depending on the type of test, it will say you need uh, like a number. For example, it might say, uh, well, like, um, Spawn's got Drag Test 1. And that means for that to be successful, it needs one success. You might have another one, which is uh, Dash Test 1, 2, 3. And the way that works is, for the first test, you need one success. For the second test, you need two successes. And for the third test, you need three. Um, and then finally, you use also another test, which is um, like Strength Test X. And if it says X, that means it's an opposed roll. So I roll and you roll mm -hmm. as well. Uh, and just like, you know, just like Dreadball, sixes do explode. So there's always that unpredictable element that you might get an extra kind of bonus as well. Mm -hmm. So let's say in this situation, I want to try and dash with Brank. Unfortunately, Brank is pretty bad at dashing as you would expect. 
So he's got speed five plus, so that means I need to roll three dice and get a five, which I don't. Typical. But if you did, then you would be able to continue along your way. And move there. And move there. Yeah. And completely slow. Um, now, because I didn't, what happens is I stay in the hex that I'm in, or the hexes, and I take a wound counter and just pop it near my card. Mm -hmm. So there's no, you don't get knocked down or anything like that. It's just you all imagine they've kind of stumbled, maybe tripped up, twisted their, well, I don't know how a robot can twist their ankle. <laughs> he punched himself in the face. Yeah, yeah, maybe he got short circuited. Yeah. Uh, but you take a wound counter and that makes it easy as well because you're not having to knock them over and things like that. So they just stop where they are and that's the end of your action. Mm -hmm. So I think we've covered movement and I imagine, Martin, you're keen to get slamming. Let's go. Okay. 